talk about the apparent motion of the planets in the sky and there's quite a few terms that you need to know. The word planet actually means wandering star. Lots and lots of stars in the sky, in constellations, and all of these stars stay in the same place, at least in our lifetime, they will stay in the same place on the celestial sphere. There are some stars that will wander across the sky, uh, well, because they're not stars, they are planets and they will wander across the sky staying close to the ecliptic and they'll move relative to all the stars on the celestial sphere. On this diagram we can see uh, Venus moving through Aquarius and these two images represent the position of Venus about a week apart. The ecliptic as I've talked about in one or two other videos, is the path of the sun throughout the sky as viewed from the Earth. The, the blue line is the celestial equator, which is above the Earth's equator, and then this red line is the ecliptic, which is the path of the sun. And notice on here, at, at this time, there's quite a few planets which are quite close to the sun. There's a bit of a, bit of a conjunction going on. Uh, the planets will stay pretty close to the ecliptic. The ecliptical plane is the, the plane of the solar system. Our solar system is, is pretty flat, and if you imagine a, a flat disk with the sun in the middle of the disk, uh, and then the earth is on that disk, then that is the ecliptical plane. And all of the other planets will be pretty close to the ecliptical plane. Some of their orbits may be slightly tilted by about one or two degrees. Mercury's orbit is about six degrees, but they're, they're, they're usually pretty close to the ecliptic. That's where you would expect to find them. Notice on the Earth here, I've drawn the, the tilt of the Earth and its equator, and that kind of explains why the ecliptic is at 23.5 degrees to the celestial equator. There are quite a few terms that you need to understand. Um, first of all, there are inferior planets. Mercury and Viri Venus are inferior because they are closer to the sun than Earth. Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, they are superior. They are further than Earth from the sun. So superior and inferior planets. Retrograde motion is when a superior planet appears to move backwards. On this animation, we can see Mars moving backwards. It, it actually takes a couple of months to do this. Um, why do these planets appear to move backwards? And it, now we know it's not as Ptolemy suggested that they move in epicycles, we know that it's because the Earth is moving faster in its orbit than these planets. And as the Earth overtakes the planet, then the planet appears to move backwards. Just as if you imagine you're in a, a fast train overtaking a slower train, which is moving in the same direction, then the slower train would appear for a while to be moving backwards and that's retrograde motion. There's a list of other terms that you need to know the meanings of um, and I suggest you learn them and you be able to sketch them uh, and be able to recognize them if you see them on the diagram. Conjunction, opposition, elongation, transit and occultation. Conjunction, well Imagine conjoined twins are, are kind of stuck together. Well, a conjunction of celestial objects is when they appear close together in the sky, a conjunction. Um, there is a couple of special conjunctions that we need to know, a superior conjunction and an inferior conjunction. And I've explained what they are on here um, a superior conjunction is when 
there's a conjunction of from Earth's point of view for, of the Sun and uh, another object when the Sun and another object are close together in the sky you, you won't be able to see the other object because it will be very close to the Sun but the conjunction is happening nevertheless an inferior conjunction is when uh, the Sun and the other object are on opposite sides of the Earth and that is an inferior conjunction it's actually when if it was a planet then it's when the planet is in opposition which is the next slide opposition two astronomical objects are said to be in opposition when they are on opposite sides of the celestial sphere or if you like there's the the Sun and there's a planet and they are on opposite sides of the earth this is the best time to view a planet is when it's in opposition why because it will be in the middle of the sky in the middle of the night so it'll be nice and dark and also um, a planet is as close as it gets to the earth when it's in opposition so it'll be as big as it gets and it'll be nice and dark and if you want to see a planet the best time to do it is when it's in opposition then there's a, a picture of Jupiter in opposition elongation remember that elongation is an angle and it's the the angle viewed from Earth the angle that uh, a planet or another object makes with the Sun as viewed from Earth uh, the term the greatest elongation refers to Venus or Mercury to inferior planets and it's the biggest angle that either Venus or Mercury makes with the Sun the greatest elongation of Venus is about 45 degrees the greatest elongation of Mercury somewhere between 18 and 28 degrees um, it, and it varies because the because the planets are the orbits are elliptical interesting to note that because uh, Venus and especially Mercury are relatively close to the Sun then when do we see them well we will see them either just after sunset or just before sunrise if you get up early in the morning and you see uh, a very bright star somewhere to the east just before sunrise it's probably not a star it's probably Venus Venus is often referred to as the morning star because it's big and bright not high in the sky but um, big and bright in the sky just before sunrise very often a transit is when an object passes in front of a, a larger object as viewed from Earth this is a, a transit of Venus transits of Venus are, are very important it's it comes up again in another topic they're very rare they're about once every hundred years and it takes about six hours for Venus to pass across the face of the Sun uh, why are they important because if you observe a, a transit of Venus from the northern hemisphere and you observe the same transit from the southern hemisphere and you take some measurements uh, then using parallax you can actually work out the scale of the solar system you can work out how far away the the earth is from the Sun and if you know that then you know how far away all of the other planets are from the Sun so the the measurements taken in 1639 by amongst others Captain Cook um, enabled astronomers to work out the scale of the solar system a value for one AU lastly occultation occultation is when an object is hidden by another object uh, most commonly if a, an object such as a planet or our Sun is hidden by our moon then it is occluded by the moon as it is during a, a total eclipse so an occultation uh, occult the word occult means means hidden knowledge scientists used to be very secretive about what what they knew 
and uh, people were very suspicious of scientists because of their their hidden knowledge and it was was it the black arts were they doing evil things no they were just being a bit a bit stingy with their knowledge but an occultation is when one object is hidden by another object. Mm-hmm.